what is going on ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a particularly spicy video i have a huge hot take which i've gotten a lot of flack for but uh, i don't care i can have my own opinions so in this video i'm going to talk about why spell crafting is going to completely ruin eso it's probably not what you're thinking Spellcrafting is not new in the Elder Scrolls Online. In fact, spellcrafting was why I loved Oblivion so much because you could completely break the game. You could come and me hot someone across the map. You can go into a town and do an AOE lightning blast. They can kill all the guards, kill all the NPCs, kill everyone that is killable in the town. Spellcrafting was amazing. So with that being said, spellcrafting is not a new concept. In fact, spellcrafting has already been in the Elder Scrolls Online since its inception. Back in 2024, there are clips of the spellcrafting altar and the spellcrafting tablet that you are going to use to craft your spells. And let me just go ahead and foreshadow some of this video and say, lest we not forget the first micro, the, well, the first popular microtransaction of any video game developer ever was the horse armor the elven horse armor in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion for $4.99 and yeah I bought it. That profound day was the pinnacle of the decline of gaming. No longer were games created for the player, they were created for the investors who are going to pump money into the game and the only thing that is on their minds is how much they're going to profit from this quarter. Fast forward to 2024 and the gaming landscape is, is, is desolate, it's decrepit. There's hardly a game that you can play besides like Elder Ring, you know, some, some good games, right? That does not have some sort of pay to win concept to it, some sort of mitigator pay for convenience type of thing. So game developers design the games to be inconvenient. So you pay to get around the inconvenience. Elder Scrolls, quote unquote, the craft bag. There's not enough space to do anything with all your crafting materials. So what best way to circumvent that is to put a craft bag that is only attainable with an ESO subscription. So with this preface and story time out of the way, these are going to be my predictions for spellcrafting. Now, there are some leaks, some sources that we already know. We already know that the spellcrafting is going to be implemented in some sort of quest line um theory says it's gonna be some sort of mages guild quest line so prediction number one however knowing the gaming industry knowing zoss knowing that we have been the cash cow for starfield and starfield was an absolute flop predicted that it was a terrible game it still is i'm going from a little bit of a tangent right the ui is absolute dog water there was one modder one modder took care of that problem in one day one modder and one day fix the UI problem. You're telling me 10 years of development time for Starfield. You could not. Your, your dev team was incompetent, incapable of fixing the UI. Come on now. Bethesda has the hands-off approach. You know, in the words of Todd Howard, the bugs are the features. It's working as intended, you know? So my very first prediction is pretty obvious. I think everyone can agree with this. It is going to be locked behind a paywall, but it's going to be a little bit different. I think this is going to be something we've never seen before in ESO. I think it is actually going to be a time... Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think it's actually going to be a paywall quest line that you cannot, without completing this quest line, you do not gain access to a certain area that you have your crafting station and, and your, your, your spell crafting tablet, so to speak. So number one, very first prediction, it's obviously going to be behind a paywall. And I'm going to expand on that a little bit further call this prediction number two. I also think that it is going to be time gated. OK, and the reason that I say that is the ESO has been hemorrhaging players forever. Um, we all know that is a pretty dead game. I don't care what stats you show me. You go and play Elder, Elder Scrolls Online. There is no one anywhere. Oh, but Horcrux, you don't play on the consoles. You're, you're using Steam charts as a as your metrics, guys. It is more dead on console, okay? It is even more dead in Europe. So if I'm on PCNA, it is the most popular platform from the Elder Scrolls Online. So when I go around the major cities and I see like 20 people in the entire city, when I say it's dead, it's dead, guys. And I'm even going to go a step further on the time-gated quest content that it's going to give you. I think after a certain amount of time, they are going to make the spell crafting station or the tablet, whatever, I think they're going to make that specifically available in the crown store in the form of a furniture item. Very similar to the way we had the Clockwork City DLC to where we had the transmute station. 
I think there's also going to be a spellcrafting station so uh, you can uh, double down. So if you don't want to travel to the area, you already have to unlock it, right? With your, you'll say your premium. We are, you already have to unlock it, we'll say $35, right? If you want ease of access to it, you're going to have to buy the furniture item as well, which is going to be another $40. So in total, they're going to get $75 out of you if, for everyone who's wanting to be a spellcrafting enjoyer. It's absurd, but smart. So my prediction is that it is going to take you one month. It is going to take you one month to complete this quest line. I think you will ascertain the quest line. I think you will finish a certain chapter of it. You'll, you'll get some pages out of your little spell book. All right, we're going to elaborate on what spell crafting, quote unquote, actually is here in just a moment. But I think you'll be able to get some pages of your, uh, some pages of your, your, your book filled out, right? But uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pages left out. And I think that those pages are going to be in the weeks to come. I think it's going to take you an entire month to acquire all of the pages. And the reason I say that is because investors look at how many people are playing the game and how many people are engaged into it. Very similar to you, the YouTube algorithm. The only thing the YouTube algorithm cares about is how many people it's shown to, how many people click on it, your click through rate, and how long they watch. That is literally all YouTube cares about and very similar with game development studios nowadays is how many people are playing your game how long are they playing it are they spend money playing it you know are there are there uh subscriptions are there microtransactions and if there's a check mark and all that they're good to go so we'll just go ahead and call that prediction number two now prediction number three this might be one of the spiciest of all the predictions i think that the spell crafting is only going to be available for the arcanist just the arcanist so in theory, I, I, I know, listen, I, I'm a theory craft bug myself. I love theory crafting. On paper, spell crafting is like, oh my God, I can create any spell that I want. I can I, I can do AOE damage. I, I can, if I'm missing a stun, I can do that. If I, if, if I need a buff, I'm missing it. If I want to fly, I, I, I freaking fly. It, my, my build's going to be awesome. It's going to be super unique. I'm going to be better than everyone else because I'm smarter, because I'm a, I'm a master spell crafter. You guys think that's what it's going to be about? No, it's not going to be about that at all. It is going to be a Slatterama. All right, spellcrafting. My prediction is going to be locked just to the Arcanist, Arcanist for now. I might be wrong on this. And we'll, we'll touch on this later. I hope that I'm wrong, but I think it's going to specifically be on the Arcanist at first. Maybe a month later, a week later, maybe they'll allot it to the uh, different classes. Who knows? But I think it is not going to be in depth like you guys are thinking. I think it is going to be very cookie cutter, very based. It is going to be, hey, here's a spell. It can do damage. It can cost this much. It can have this amount of range. And you're going to have a bunch of sliders and you're just going to tweak it. And that's going to be it. The, the, the next best case scenario, let's take everyone's favorite ability, rending slashes. Love this meta. Gotta love it. It has different components to the ability. For example, Rending Flashes does initial hits, right? It just does initial hits and also has a dot component. So maybe, maybe you can take off some of that dot damage. I'm looking opposite in the camera, so I'm actually going the wrong way on the slider bar. So you can take that off of the damage, right? And then you maybe you can bolster the initial hit, you know, something like that. I don't think it is going to be anything creative. I don't think it's going to be anything game breaking by any means, guys. I'm just going to kind of set expectations. So up until this point, it's been a pretty cynic, pretty negative point of view. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to get worse. And the reason it's going to get worse is because I'm about to hit you guys with the most realist of true, the most truest of real statements you've ever heard. Let's say I was wrong on these predictions up to this point. This seems like pretty obvious predictions, okay? Let's say that I'm completely wrong and it is the best thing ever. You could completely have control over how the spells interact. Maybe you can do the hybrid spells. You know, maybe it's everything we hoped it to be. Um, Who is gonna balance this? Do, do you think our devs are going to balance this, okay? The Battle Spirit bug has been in the game for five years, okay? I've posted multiple times on the forums just to fix heavy attacks with dual wield. Heavy attack dual wields are doing 50% damage instead of 100%. That's a scalar problem. And I'm about to go down a, a little bit of a rabbit hole because I, I wasn't going to bring this up again, but I feel that it does have some relevance to this conversation that I am having with you guys. So due to the intellectual properties, Zoss has this scapegoat saying that 
they do not want to explain how they do their balancing, how they do their bug fixes, how the bug fixes work. They just want to fix it and sweep it under the rug. I can tell you guys beyond shadow of a doubt that is BS, okay? Because, for example, Destiny, I, I freaking love Destiny. They have a weekly update this week at Bungie, a TWAB, okay? I'm calling it a TWAB. I think they call it a TWIB now, this week at Bungie, but what, whatever, this week in Bungie. I don't know. It, it, it's a TWAB, okay? They come out with a weekly update of all the bugs. How are they fixing them? They are assigning accountability, and they are sharing that information with the public. And I had this statement from the horse's mouth. The senior director of customer support, Boy Beasley, has went on record to say that the reason that they don't share anything is because they don't want other developers to know how they fix their spaghetti code. There are too many holes in it, and it's too easy to infringe upon, too, too easy to exploit. They don't share any of that information because their net code, um, their, their, their source code that they're using is dog shit. You don't have to know what any of that means. Just imagine trying to build a house on sand. No matter how well the house is built, no matter how good the structural integrity of your mansion is, it's still built on a foundation of sand and it will never last. And another topic, if you're new to this channel or you don't know anything about Elder Scrolls Online, or you played a little bit, PvE and PvP exist in this game. It used to be like 90% PvP and then 10% PvE. It's since swapped. Now it's like 10% PvE and, oh, excuse me, 10% PvP and 90% PvE, right? As you guys know, if you play World of Warcraft, you know, any MMO like that, you cannot balance PvE and PvP at the same time. They cannot coexist. The changes you make for one directly affect the other, and it just gets out of whack. Zoss refuses to balance PvE along with PvP independently of each other. My reasoning behind this is that, again, the hands-off approach less is more the less effort that in resources they have to put into something the more value they're going to get out of it because this game is dead in the water and is just used as a cash cow so they don't want to reinvest in their own product which sucks because i love this game so how they balance everything okay so you have all your pve abilities if you do anything pvp related they put a debuff on everyone that they put a debuff it's called the battle spirit debuff and essentially all this is it's a scaler okay it lowers all the damage you do by 50%, all the healing you do by 50%, all your wards and barriers by 50%. That is their form of balancing. So what will happen is, and this was a famous quote by Jake and one of the devs in one of his forum posts, right? He says that the Nightblade is super underperforming in PvE, so they gave it a lot of buffs, they gave it a lot of damage. And in PvP, if you guys played any PvP, if you watch this channel, you know we're all about that PvP life. You know Nightblades are ludicrously OP and they can already two-tap you. So they just added more damage and more utility to the only class in the game that can two-tap anyone in the game. The time to kill on the Nightblade is literally a second. It is ridiculous. So to wrap this point up, point number four is balancing. No one's going to do it. No one's going to be able to do it with a plethora of unique skills. It, you think there's not going to be any exploits? Guys, you know I'm the exploit guy. You know I'm the bug guy. I'm going to find all these things. All right, I'm going to find them, right? They're, they're going to be there. We're going to break ESO. It won't take long. I give it a week before they, they, they drop a hot patch or completely disable it. Okay, I give it a week. Now, point number five, which is going to be the most base point of them all. When you introduce spellcrafting, so now you have, uh, we'll say infinite. It's not going to be infinite, right? You, you Say you have access to hundreds of new abilities. Where are you going to put them? If you play ESO, you already know you only have 12 abilities that you can slot on your bars. That's not enough, okay? That is simply not enough. Where are you going to put it? Even if there is spellcrafting, you're going to need to take away one of your necessity buffs, right? Just just, just put in some 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 dog water spell that you created. The, the spells aren't going to be great, guys. Again, it's just going to be some sort of sli slider rama. It, it, it's not going to be good, okay? So what will have to happen if spellcrafting is as good as I hope it is, not as good as I'm predicting in this video, you will have to have an extra two slots on your bars just for symmetry. One extra slot on your back bar and one extra slot on your front bar to compensate. If Zoss does not give us one, well, two extra spell spaces, spell bars, ability bars, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be a flop. 
So to sum everything up, how is spellcrafting going to inadvertently ruin ESO? Well, number one, it's going to be a super big hype. It's just going to lay a lot of people down, okay? Number two is the, the monetization behind it. The monetization is going to be astronomical. I, I can already tell. I, I had those feelers out there. I, I can just feel it in my bones, guys. And then the lack of support when it comes to balancing and community feedback with the devs. I, I just don't think that this, this wonderful concept of spellcrafting is going to be anything out of the ordinary. I think it is going to be a reuse asset that they just don't use correctly and they don't utilize the the full potential and going into 2024 there's a lot of mmos coming out so unless za somehow hits a home run with this spellcrafting it will be the end of eso and the reason it will be the end of eso is because they went the monetization route instead of truly utilizing what spellcrafting could potentially be well, those are my five predictions. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you have some canon information you would like to share with the world, please leave them down in the comments. If you're a dev yourself and you would like to comment on this video, maybe invite me to a little one-on-one -on -one so you can uh, help me hype up the spellcrafting for your monetization purposes. Yeah, you know, hit me up. I have a business email, okay? Before you guys peace out, I do have a secondary channel for FPS content. So if you guys are interested in that, the link is down in the description below. And as always, a huge and glorious shout out to my YouTube members. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. This has been Horcrux. I hope you guys have a great 2024. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.